Things have changed a lot in the past year or so. You've probably seen differences in everything you do, but this isn't the first time Canada's seen a pandemic or the world. Between 1918 and 1920, we went through the erroneously named Spanish flu, and that was a bad one. Spanish flu was erroneously named because of World War I. The many nations at war censored their media, but Spain, being a neutral nation, didn't. Therefore, they were, they were giving numbers of people becoming sick from this particular influenza, even their monarch who had become ill. So many people believed it was something that was originating in Spain. The influenza changed many things of the way people lived at that time. Things such as church, moving pictures, gatherings, bars, pubs, they were all closed. Nobody could go there. Even the NHL had to cancel the Stanley Cup in 1919, as many members of the Montreal Canadiens and the Seattle Metropolitans had come ill with the flu. Joe Hall, a Montreal defenseman, was called by death. The plague seemed to pick people randomly. People like Claire and Vera. They were roommates, and they had actually been to lectures about this pandemic. One morning, Claire gets up to, for breakfast. She calls to her roommate, Vera, that she's going down to have breakfast, and uh, she'll be back shortly. She doesn't get an answer. She goes down. She's having her breakfast and during that time decides she, she's going to go out and do a little bit of shopping. She decides to go up, grab her purse, and go out. During that time, she calls to her roommate again to let her know that she's going out. Still, no response. This time, Claire is kind of worried. She goes in and checks. The attending physician estimates that uh, Vera had passed away at about 2 a.m. But the strange thing about it, her roommate, when she went to bed, had no symptoms whatsoever. It's always a, an amazement when you find a piece of history. But when you find a piece of history of your own family, you kind of wonder what this person might have been thinking or doing at that time. But when you actually find something that has their written word and they're telling you about their life and daily happenings, that is quite an achievement. And I'm here today with David Hooper. Good morning, Joe. What is it that uh, you've, uh, you've discovered uh, from your family history? Well, I, during the, the COVID, I've been reading my great-grandfather's diaries. <laughs> and I started by looking at his diaries for the period of the Spanish flu epidemic more than 100 years ago. He has a long line of diaries. He has a number of diaries telling a fair amount of the family story, doesn't he? Yes. He kept diaries, um, well, he started, I think, when he was a teenager, mm -hmm. but I couldn't find those ones. They've disappeared. Yeah. But I've, I've got them from 1895 until he <laughs> died in 1936. And during the time of the pandemic, where was he living? Well, he was living in Victoria. Mm -hmm. He'd moved there from Nova Scotia as a 21-year-old young man. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had a fair amount to say about the uh, pandemic. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. um, except it was, it was just one of the things that he mentioned in the diary because mm -hmm. at that time, World War I was coming to an end, and that was what was preoccupying everybody. And then this flu epidemic showed up, but the big thing going on was this huge, biggest war there'd ever been. Friday, October 11th. Heavy rain during the night and this morning, owing to the pressure of work. I hustled into town a little early, trying hard to catch up. Very busy all day, and the west coast is a day late too. Bad news today. Three boats torpedoed with a big loss of life. 
Fortunately, the Allies are still advancing. Our influenza epidemic is still increasing. 175 cases reported in Victoria. So prior to the end of World War I, they didn't really consider it a pandemic? Uh, pandemic's the word we use now, but they very quickly called it an epidemic. Mm -hmm. within, a, within a week of it showing up in Victoria, he was talking about the flu epidemic. And how did it affect his family? Well, his family and his extended family, they were fortunate. Nobody mm -hmm. died. But an awful lot of them became sick or even mm -hmm. very sick. But uh, he certainly mentions uh, the effect on Victoria. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the effects that we've seen in the current COVID epidemic, mm -hmm. in fact, there's some things that are very similar. What are some of the similarities? Well, uh, they called it the ban. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, public gatherings were banned. Churches were closed. Uh, theaters, cinemas, because there were movie cinemas by then. Mm -hmm. uh, schools were shut down. Um, but people still went to work. They had to. Mm -hmm. There was no welfare. There was no prime minister paying you to stay home. So mm -hmm. you went to work anyway. So they did some of the moves that we've seen to try to limit the spread of the virus. But uh, on the other hand, they had to survive. So it was kind of a catch-22. Yeah. You know, you have to work to survive, but if you go to work, you could be spreading a virus. Yeah. Well, he had three children in, in school, so mm -hmm. they were home. So yeah. underfoot, had to figure out, just like now, what do you do with your kids? Yeah. <laughs> Entertain them, educate them, whatever mm -hmm. you're trying to do. And he had three daughters who were young adults, one who just got married, that was my mm -hmm. grandmother, and the other two, they were off at, in Vancouver to college. Mm -hmm. Well, that shut down too, so they came mm -hmm. home. And uh, I believe uh, the health officer in Vancouver wasn't as strict as uh, Victoria. No, that's what I gather, and I, I've been looking at the newspapers too, just mm -hmm. to cross-reference, and yeah, the Victoria health officer was quicker Mm -hmm. to to put in restrictions mm -hmm. and and to try to lessen the spread and Vancouver wasn't so quick their health officer so consequently there were more cases of influenza and more deaths mm -hmm. and there was controversy about masks or when do you remove the van you ah, know mm -hmm. or not so it, it was it was just like now there was this so. controversy except there was no social media, there was no mm -hmm. radio, there was no television. It wasn't mm -hmm. in your face like it is yeah. now, and there wasn't everybody shouting on social media. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I know, I've seen some of that. And But it did affect where he worked. There were employees there too who were stricken. Oh yes, that was the first mention that he made, was he was in charge of the mail order department in the biggest department store in Victoria called mm -hmm. Spencer's and there were two young women that were all working with him on the mail order department mm -hmm. and that's the mention is boy I had a tough day uh, nobody showed up they're both sick and so I had to do all the work myself and mm -hmm. he was tired yeah. and then that was a Monday and then by the Friday I think one of them came back and he was relieved because the work was still piling up one of the Interesting things he mentioned was he was double busy on the Thursday because he had to make up the order for the West Coast. That was the Princess mm -hmm. McQuinna that used to come into Port Alberni mm -hmm. once a week. And so he was double busy because he had to be making up that order. But by the Friday of that same week, he starts saying, oh, it's the an influenza epidemic and there's 175 cases in Victoria. So it mm -hmm. took off. Yeah, and I believe it wasn't too much longer after that, the numbers actually started to increase again. Yes, uh, by three days later, there was 200 and something cases in Victoria. And that's when, you know, after that first week, that's when the restrictions start, mm -hmm. the ban that he called. They yeah. closed the schools, the cinemas and public gatherings mm -hmm. and churches. In those days, many more people, you know, church was a big 
activity. Mm -hmm. And so that was quite something, shutting the churches mm -hmm. down. Yeah, and um, that was when, that was October, I believe, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, this was in October, Yeah. So only a month before mm -hmm. the end of the First World War. Yeah, and uh, then just prior to the end of the war, there was a false uh, ending, I believe. Yeah, he reported this in his diary, and then I looked it up in the uh, Victoria paper. And yeah, there was on November the 7th, mm -hmm. there were rumors, you know, because mm -hmm. the war was winding down because mm -hmm. the German army was in re retreat. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, were there were negotiations going on, and there was a false report of an armistice. Mm -hmm. And he said, the town just exploded. He said there was, even though there wasn't supposed to be gatherings, you know, mm -hmm. forget it. It was the end of four years of war. And so he said, everybody was out in the street. There was impromptu parades. There were firecrackers. There were mm -hmm. all kinds of things going on. And then late at night, they learned, no nope, false alarm. Oh, but I'm sure that probably was a start of another wave. Yeah, we would call that a super spreader, I think, mm -hmm. nowadays. Yeah. And then when the armistice day four days later, mm -hmm. when it was the real end of the war, wow, same thing. So we mm -hmm. had two super spreader events. Mm -hmm. And then one month later, six weeks, you got Christmas holidays. Mm. Yes. Uh, more super spreaders. And that's probably why he reported in January of 1919, hey, wow, the flu is back worse than ever. January 11th, Saturday. A little chance for relaxation today with the West Coast out of the way. Taking in a few outings, running around, attending to small commissions. Still keeps mild, a little dull today. Nearly everyone is interested in the flu. Nurses are in urgent demand. The doctors are on the rush all the time. George seems to be quite all right again and our family quite good. I believe they had a, they had uh, taken the ban off there just off in November. Yeah, they they took the ban off in November 20th, mm -hmm. and the kids went back to school. But something I hadn't noticed when I first looked at the diaries, I picked up on it last week, was well, they shut the schools in Victoria down again mm. in December because the flu rate was going up in the schools. So the public health officer obviously was trying to. Mm -hmm. slow the transmission by shutting the schools and then knowing that the Christmas holidays were coming on so there would be a, a real break mm. for the, the kids as spreaders. Oh, for sure. And then on the second wave after, after that, it, it really caught on again, the uh, pandemic. It really fired up again. Yeah. I, yeah, I believe a number of his family was... Uh, was ill. Yes, uh, they, it looked, he, he, he often didn't say, oh, George has the flu or something like that, but it was obvious that he did. Oh, George is home, he's flat out, he's got a high temperature, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, that was my grandfather. And uh, then various of his in-laws and, and, and family members were going down one after the other, and some were so seriously ill that they had nurses came to the house to look after them and he said that uh, he was reporting that the, there was a shortage of nurses and the doctors mm -hmm. are getting run off their feet mm -hmm. you know a lot of stuff that we've been hearing about during the current COVID yeah. thing and that's not something that you would commonly do is go to a hospital or call a doctor if you're if you're not well well back. If, if you were sick you'd call a doctor and doctors would do health would do house calls if you were lucky, mm -hmm. but they were swamped. So, but he was in a situ he was in a financial situation where he could afford a doctor. Many people at that time, mm -hmm. doctors were out of range. We didn't have the Medicare that we have today. That's right. That was one of the that was one of the biggest differences between mm -hmm. then and now. That's right. There was no. There was no Dr. Bonnie Henry, mm -hmm. provincial health officer. There was a provincial health officer, but there wasn't the means of mass mm -hmm. communications that we have yeah. now. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't uh, a medical system like we've got now, no health insurance. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it was quite, 
you're right. If you were well off, you got looked after better than if you were in more precarious circumstances. January 25th, Saturday. Rain and wind is the order of the day. Pretty quiet in town and very few mail orders. No special news either. The authorities are discussing the ban again. The influenza seems worse than ever. All sorts of reports going around. The store was open late tonight, but it was pretty quiet. Heavy rain most of the time and cold too. And uh, how long does he mention this particular uh, influenza continuing till? Well, after January of 1919, I don't see much mention of it mm -hmm. in, in his diaries for that year. I know that if you look up in, in some of the histories, they will say there was third and fourth waves and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it didn't, it didn't, you know, he was writing mainly of his daily activities mm -hmm. and his family. And, and I guess that it, it went off of, it went off of the screen in uh. 1919. There was, um, I did learn that there were several temporary hospitals around. Mm -hmm. You know, like there was a big army camp yeah. in Victoria because of the war. Mm -hmm. And there was a temporary hospital there. Um, and he mentions that. Mm -hmm. And it's also mentioned in the newspaper. Yeah. yeah. So he himself, uh, I believe, was, wasn't too well at the time either. No, he, he never said, oh, I've got the flu or something like that. He just kept going to work. Mm which I think in nowadays, we, you know, the big thing is if you're sick, stay home. That's the yeah. big thing you see in all the signs <laughs> now. Well, now it's... him and everybody else, they all went to work. Yeah. <laughs> and there was no vaccine. There's the biggest mm -hmm. difference. There was no vaccine. Yeah. So the disease just ran its course. The yeah. virus, ran, when it finally ran out of victims to get sick, mm -hmm. then it finished. Then it finished. Um, we're into the last minute. Is there anything else you'd like to add that uh, I might have missed? Well, for me, the most important thing I've been getting out of this, these diaries, is I'm meeting a fellow I never knew. My mm -hmm. great-grandfather died in 1936. Mm -hmm. I never knew anything about yeah. him. My great-grandmother, I certainly knew. I, as a small child, I knew mm -hmm. her as a very elderly granny going blind and then suffering from dementia. Mm -hmm. But here I'm meeting them as vibrant young people with little kids running around and, and uh, visiting back and forth in the family. And then all these other great aunts and great uncles that I knew as elderly gentlemen and elderly ladies, I'm seeing them as little kids running around. It's, I'm finding, for me, it's a real revelation and I feel privileged and lucky to have found this. During the time of this pandemic, doctors were hard pressed and they put the call out to people to come and help. Many people did. People like Mrs. Stevenson, a midwife in Nanaimo, she took up the challenge. But she had one secret before she would go into anybody's place. She had a bottle of brandy with her, even though she was a teetotaler. And what she would do, she'd take her bottle of brandy and uh, she would get a little bit, wipe her mouth, wipe her nose, and wipe her hands before and after coming into anybody's place or leaving it. During the entire pandemic, for all the people that she saw, she never took sick. Remember, during this time, there's very few vaccines available. Even penicillin won't be discovered until 1928 which is almost another 10 years away. So of course, people are trying to find their own cures. Things such as goose grease, bran, lard, mixed with turpentine to rub on your chest or other body parts. Uh, there was Dr. Williams' pink pills for pale people. Of course, 
That only lasted a while as it was found out to be an actual scam. As you can see, some things never change. People are people. This particular pandemic is finally starting to clear up, just like it did in 1920. But remember, always use the safety precautions that uh, your medical professional has advised. I'm Gerald Labute, your friendly neighborhood time traveler, and I'll see you next time, whenever in time that may be. And remember, please stay safe.